Grow With Me Gardens. It's It's been a, a year or so in the making, but um, I don't want to call it a business. I'm, I'm wanting to create a community-based organization that focuses on awareness and production of food, of local food, um, and, um, you know, an understanding of, of our local food networks and how we are a part of it and how we can nurture our relationship with it. So that's kind of, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a roundabout way, what I'm, yeah. what Growth in Gardens is. And, and so I'm, I'm working with some, um, you know, established farmers and established gardeners to increase their edible um, plants that they're growing, their perennial plants, trees, um, and and hosting some a series of workshops for the you know the public and and um, to do some hands-on learning and, and and exploring of local gardens to to learn more about what what our food is and where it comes from. So yeah, and. Yeah, I don't know what to call it. I, I've it's it's been you know dancing between business and organization. I, I hope to be an, a nonprofit um, organization because the, the reason why I'm I'm doing what I'm doing isn't to make money. It's 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 to help people, um, and um, you know it's it's been a, a an integral part of my journey, um, learning about food and and how I can grow my own food. That's been a really important. Um, aspect of my life and yes uh, COVID has really put a spotlight on on food and where it comes from and the really concerning um, industry that food has been made into and all of the processing and disconnecting from food um, like when you can't identify what you're eating I you know I I have concerns about that and I'm sure I'm not the only one Yes, yes, of course. So um, when we were interacting before the interview, I loved, I got chills just reading your notes because you were kind of going back and forth about what you wanted to talk about. And, and for you, nature really has been um, a healing presence in your life. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit, how the role that nature has had in your healing journey. Yeah, um, you know, we've all had a lot of time to to reflect, hopefully, on ourselves over the past year. Um, the the forest isolation, I've tried to embrace it, um, and you know, I've really come back to you know my human nature, and and I naturally want to be outside. And naturally, last year, my my sanctuary, my sanity, was found in my garden, um, just observing you know, walking through the yard, walking through a forested area um, and and planting seeds, tending to seeds, harvesting, eating, like there's, that's such an intimate relationship that I have with, you know, my garden and my food. And it's really, you know, as I've, like last year was pretty eye-opening because I was able to observe the garden and I was able to, to relate to it, if that makes sense. Like I was yeah. able to, you know, um, say the, the, the virtue of patience, right? And, and I, I, I heard or read lately that patience is trusting that something's going to happen and, and like holding space within yourself and trusting that it's going to happen. And, you know, being in isolation, trusting that I'm going to have these connections with my friends, with my family, with my community again, um, you know, and, and seeing how the plants within a community are in my garden and how they have to be patient for the season. They have to be patient for what's coming. Um, yes. That's, that was a, a big lesson that I, that I found myself reflecting on a lot. Um, and when I found myself getting frustrated that I couldn't do things or that I couldn't go places or see people, you know, you, I, I found myself observing that, you know, plants don't get to go around and, and drive to <laughs> wherever and, and visit whoever, you know, they, they have to sit, they sink their roots, you know, they listen to the wind, they, they, they soak in the sun, and they just be there. And that, that's, um, you know, that can be a valuable lesson for us to apply to our human lives, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Yes, it's very hard to just sit and, and have faith <laughs> that things will yeah. happen without you taking yeah. time. Right. Having that patience and having that that you know ability to be calm and to just 
be in the space that you're in and not be constantly looking for the next thing, constantly trying to make things happen. That that brings so much frustration. Yes. Um, so that's... <laughs> And you were saying one of the things that you talked about was how much you learned about resilience uh, from observing the garden. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, um, you know, when when you're gardening, when like, you know, I, I have experience with market gardening, so planting larger volumes of, of crops um, in, you know, more traditional type plantings or or uh, my personal garden I like to interplant stuff like I don't have a whole bunch of rows of carrots like I'll put a bit of carrots and a bit of you know um whatever lettuce and I mix up the the species then that diversity it, it has it I kind of saw that it it lent to a certain kind of resilience when when you're able to um not just be doing the same monotonous thing over and over and over when you're able to explore the different you know range of activities whether it's physical or within your own mental space and when you're able to go to anger say and and say yes I get angry sometimes and then I feel that and you know it can be resolved and yes I feel happy and that doesn't last either like that that resolves back to you know it becomes a bit of a dance and and when you're able to do that dance then I, I think your resiliency is in, increased, right? You're able to to withstand more. You're able to tolerate more. You're able to, um, you know, words don't do justice. But but does that make sense? Does that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. So again, it comes back to accepting, just accepting the flow and going with it instead of fighting it. Yeah. Um, which we tend to, we tend to fight everything. If it's not positive, we just fight it. We just say, no, <laughs> I'm not ready. I don't want this. But yeah. I think we one have of, a choice, but we don't. Yeah. And one of, one of my favorite, you know, we've been sharing a lot of, not me, we, you and me, but in general, we've been on social media a lot more. I've seen a lot of people sharing, you know, inspirational quotes and whatnot. And one of my favorite ones that I've come across is we are human beings, not human doings. Yeah. And it kind of just hit me. I'm like, yeah. You know, I can just be here. I can just walk through the garden. I, I don't have to be doing anything to be valid, right? I don't have right. to. And and when you come to that space in isolation, then suddenly isolation is not such a big deal. Like the whole pandemic is not, it's not such a, a you know, chaotic, stressful, um, trying thing when you're able to just, be where you are you know and I might sound super hippie and might <laughs> some people might glaze over at that but I think it's really important to to be able to observe and reflect and and hold your own space um, yes you know so that's that's yeah. a that's a hard thing to do <laughs> that's a hard thing to do. yeah it is so talk about that space you that came that came through a few times that the idea of creating a space not just for your garden but for yourself a healing space a space for yourself um can we talk about that a little bit sure so um you know for anyone who doesn't know me like I'm a single mom I have three kids uh the newest edition is two months old um so as you can imagine like physically I don't get to to take time to go and you know self-care do things completely by myself um you know that's, that's not part of my reality right now so what i've had to do is really go inside and when i'm feeling uh, an emotional you know something that is overwhelming emotionally i've had to you know go back to myself like go back to you know the a technique that i, that I learned in yoga like breathing like just the act of breathing yeah Right. And yeah. just, you know, doing yep. that. And when you're, when you're just at your, your limit emotionally, just, just having the, the self-control to say, breathe. Yeah. Oh, that has saved me so many times. Um, you know, and, and, yeah. and then that, be, that becomes a relationship with yourself within yourself. 
right? Because I don't need anyone else to tell me that. I don't, you know, in fact, I don't like it when other people tell me how I have my own relationship within myself. Um, and that's been, that's a coping mechanism. That's for me yes. been a, a healthy coping mechanism versus um, other yes. types of nervous system regulation, right? Like yeah. when you're breathing, when you're taking that deep, slow breath, it's nervous system regulation. You're telling yourself that you're okay. Yeah. You will be okay. Yeah. You're still breathing. You're still mm-hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just calm down, observe what's going on. What are you feeling? What's happening? Yeah. And, and then you can kind of almost guide yourself to process that. So, so when I, you know, when we, t- when I talk about my garden and my, my spiritual healing and my, my, my self healing, it's, it's intertwined because I am a natural being. I'm a human being and I, I am not separate from outside. I'm not separate from the gardens, right? I eat the food and it becomes me and yes. I'm breathing the air and it, it becomes me. And I'm, you know, in turn providing space for these plants to grow and whether I benefit from it or not, there is still an uh, incredible value in, in holding that space for myself or for other beings. Right. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. <laughs> that's, and I go down I a li- rabbit hole. <laughs> I like what you said about, um, you're saying to what, what would happen if we stopped cultivating like gardens, right? What if we mm-hmm. stopped over cultivating and we just, let nature take over and uh, yeah again like you said you know then then you have space for the emotions then you're in the flow right Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily that we can't cultivate um but it's just like anything like you know too much of anything is is not a good thing like when you over cultivate or when you over process you're Mm -hmm. you're 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 physically breaking up things that aren't naturally supposed to be broken up as much as, as you're doing, right. When we're, when we take, when we take food and we molecularly, or, you know, when we break up corn, like if you consider all of the products that we've derived from corn, from, from, you know, separating the, the, the elements of it and then reapplying and recreating something completely different. Yes. You know, Yes, it comes from corn, but you're, you're, there comes a point when you're, when you're, you know, doing too much, right? Then it's, it's science, you know, I, that's where it gets uncomfortable. So, yeah. you know, uh, my comparison, like, so my, my garden, say, compared to a field of corn, we'll stick on the corn, nowhere mm-hmm. ever, naturally, ever, do you see such a monoculture? Yes. It's yeah. not natural. Yes. Right? The corn it comes from a natural place, but it's to propagate it that way is not natural. And and relating that back to myself, when I expect myself to behave in a certain way that's m- like monotonous with everyone else, that's also not natural. And it's not healthy. Yeah. It's spiritually not healthy. It's physically not, not healthy, right? Yeah. When I'm relying on, on an external source to tell me how to be, yeah. Mm-hmm. right it, it, then you mm-hmm. kind of lose your own ability to to self-regulate which is part of resilience if you can't self-regulate if you can't decide what is best for you and how you are able to you know find that place within yourself to you know just be so coming back to the seasons so you're talking mm-hmm. about the importance of acknowledging um the importance of acknowledging the season that you're in and embracing each season. You know, and that's where, you know, I've, I find resolve or I find support in, in like continuing to observe the natural spaces that, that are important to me outside. Right. Like I'm looking at my window and and there's trees out here that I've planted I don't know if you see those spruce trees yes, I see. and there's, there's, you know, a tamarack that has no needles and there's some sugar maple babies and, and, you know, yeah, I, I see these trees and I see that they too are, are likely feeling the warmth of the sun. They're, they're, they're like waiting, waiting until they're able to bud, mm-hmm. but they, they have to hold off. They have to wait until 
the season is right or else if you if you jump too soon if you jump the gun then that's not going to do you any good because you're you know yeah. right so so that's where i'm at i'm i'm you know i find myself coming back to my breath coming back to reminding myself to be patient um you know i'm not going to get my own property my own house my own you know s- land space with like that that's not going to happen i have to you know i have to you know follow a certain set of rules or make a plan and and you know it doesn't all happen in a, a day right so that's kind yeah. of where where i'm at and and you know the the winter season right the the winter is so often you know regarded as the season where people get depressed people get overwhelmed people get um tired angry frustrated all of those emotions that are are seen as negative um and i've really been trying to not see it as a negative but as as uh, an like an other like it's okay to feel depressed because then you can isolate where yeah. you're hurting right it's okay to feel like down because then you can say okay i'm feeling down and and i'm hurting here so how how am i going to take better care of myself here so that the pendulum doesn't swing quite so far the seasons of nature it's a cycle it's not a it's not a linear thing it it doesn't go winter spring summer fall it's winter spring summer fall winter spring summer fall winter spring summer fall and you know that's the whirlpool you can either go winter spring summer fall blah, 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 or you can you can go up right and and taking the negatives or the opposites of of the positive if i you know yes. i don't want negative to be a bad thing does that make sense yes yes absolutely right yeah um, it's the it, whole thing get into, not, you whole get into thing. magnetic pool or mag- magnetic pools and and how things you you kind of need to like ricochet and pull off of of people to get that energy to get yourself to where you're going so that's where winter allows you to kind of sit observe yes. feel and then as soon as it's the season to grow then you know hold me back <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because as you're talking, what I'm hearing um, is the need for grounding, which, you know, when we're, we're talking about gardening and, and nature, mm-hmm. it's sort of this grounding, like I'm here right now, I'm just going to breathe and I'm going to take whatever's happening and I'm just going to go with it. It's, it's a lot like the plants where you're, you know, you are grounded and you are just whatever's happening is happening but you're mm. still grounded in, in you are in your space that space that you've created mm. and and you know to ground yourself like i love to be barefoot in the summer like uh, it's nine times out of ten if you find me in the garden i likely won't have shoes on unless i'm operating some sort of dangerous machinery <laughs> yes. um <laughs> right but good but, idea <laughs> <laughs> yes um, but yeah, the, that grounding, like when you, when you have a space where you can like literally go and ground yourself. Yes. Yeah. That is so important. And, and that's where I, I get where, as I, you know, I, I can't say I'm getting old, like know. I'm 20, I'm 26, but I'm, I'm becoming more aware of, you know, social structures and community, community structures and, um, community developments and, <laughs> You know, that's where I get concerned on a community level is when people don't have access to spaces to ground themselves, whether yeah. or not they understand what they're doing, right? Like so I, I, a lot of people probably don't think about it as much as I have, but no. but when, but when you know, I, I think of folks who are raised in the city and they they've never experienced um, a holistic garden or uh an undisturbed forest right if you if you've never experienced what that means what that feels like to walk into a forest that's not um landscaped to walk into a forest that's not rose to walk into a forest that is you know so many other creatures and 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 organisms and beings so many other things live there right yeah and yes. um 
like when you don't understand what that means, then then it's 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 you know people they don't know what they're missing, right? And that's where I think is it's very uh, concerning on a on a community level when there's not space left for that fallow ground for that land to remain as it is naturally. Yeah. Um, right. And yeah. so yeah, I mean, there's a big difference in my mind between. Um, between, you know, like I just think of like the agricultural museum mm -hmm. and, and the, the finely cultivated manicured nature. And that's yeah. a lot different from a wild nature, right? So, okay, what I've learned, um, I'm just reading what I've sent you, you know, allowing for nature to come back in, like allowing for yourself to feel things and to not, um, to not be conditioned to respond, if that makes sense. Like all of our ranges of emotions and, and you know, they have a season, they have a place, they have a, a purpose. And yeah. to not, to, to, you know, accept that and to not feel that you have to suppress or accentuate um, to meet a certain expectation. Like expectations are so dangerous with yourself and with your community, with your family. When you expect something of someone, you know, you're, you're almost setting yourself, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. You're setting yourself up for um, a harder lesson. And, and that yeah. comes back to, um, you know, I, sorry, I have too many places on my phone where I make notes. <laughs> um, you know, uh, my, when you setting your intentions, like when, when I'm gardening, you know, what is my intention? Is my intention to, to produce food strictly? Yeah. No, not necessarily. Yeah. Is my intention to um, provide habitat for other species? Okay. Not singularly, but that's, that's a result of, of some of how I garden. Um, you know, when you, when you kind of come back to yourself and, and ask yourself, what's your intention for your, for your actions? Yeah that's been a big a big thing that I've learned with gardening because there's been times in the garden where I've been disappointed I've been frustrated when when you know a certain crop doesn't turn out how it should or how I thought it should yeah or you know when you expect a tried and true to produce and it doesn't you know it's it's a gardening can be very humbling <laughs> yeah <laughs> I just say um, yeah. But the three, the three main lessons or the three main values or, or things that I come back to are observe, observance, mm -hmm. you, like just not trying to manipulate or change, but just observing what's going on. Um, it's one of my favorite yeah. things to yeah. do in the summer on in an evening after working during the day, I, uh, you know, I'll either take the kids or after they've gone to bed and I still have that little bit of daylight. And I just kind of meander through the garden mm -hmm. and observe, like kind of make a little, maybe a mental note of what I'd like to do next, what I intend to do next. Um, yes. But just observing, you know, what's blooming, what's done blooming, what's um, where the bees are, where, you know, what the fruit is coming, what what has been passed, what I missed, what's what's decaying, and and you know that's there's that's fine. <laughs> Um, but that's one of my favorite things to do is observe, to just walk through and look, um, patience, like we've talked about, you know, and, and patience isn't, um, you know, mm. I remember in elementary school, patience was, we had like the wall of virtues or whatever it was. And, you know, there's like responsibility and patience yes. and respect and compassion and all of those things. Um, but, you know, sometimes things don't really click until you experience a certain series of events. And for me, patience is, is really trusting that, the, you know, trusting that it's, that it's going to come to you, right? Trusting that the yeah. season will end and the next season will start. It's, it's not a matter of if, it's a when um you know trusting and and being patient yeah. you know they're all they're all kind of intertwined and and the other one is respect and as a parent um that's been you know like you just heard me you know you need to give space 
you know, don't be on yeah. top of each other. Stop, you know, don't put yourself into someone else's space and then get upset when they don't want you there. Right. right. Um, and as an adult, how many, how many times have we learned that lesson? When you, when you put yourself into someone's space, perhaps with good intentions. Yeah. But when you, you, when you lose the respect for that person's space, right. For the space that they're holding for themselves, that yeah. might be too many words, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's, um, you know, somehow I've gotten that out of gardening, right? When you, when you're yeah. not, when you don't, when you don't plant your plants with, with the right amount of space, then they, they, they may not succeed. Right. Yeah. Right? Or, yeah. or, or cover cropping, which is um, a big thing with regenerative agriculture right now, cover cropping. The point of cover cropping is to smother certain plants or to smother certain weeds. And so I, I chuckle to myself, like, don't cover crop your children, right? Or yeah. don't, right? <laughs> you don't want yeah. to smother who they're naturally trying to be, or you don't want to, you don't want to smother what's naturally trying to live, you know, in your space. And, you know, uh, to round it off, like, I'm, I'm in a, a gardening group, and, and in this spring, we intend to visit each other's gardens and to see what we've, what we've done, what we've created within our space. And, right the beauty in that is that nobody is coming into your space and telling you what to do but rather coming in and, and having that freedom to share how you've been creative yeah that's a pretty liberating thing and that's a pretty um inspiring thing you know you look at anyone who creates art anyone who creates music which i do anyone yeah. who cooks anyone who likes to be um expressive in any way like gardening is just another art form really yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you can do the, the Pollock and just throw paint at a canvas. You can just chuck seeds out the backyard and, and let them go. Yeah. Or you can do the meticulous pointillism, or you can do, you know, there's so many different ways to express. Like, it's just another art form. That's, yes. That's, that's kind of the, the beauty of it. You know, the pandemic has really shed a light on where people have been depressed or where people have been perhaps feeling oppressed. And, and, and having that freedom to then express themselves. And that is intrinsically important, I think. Um, so my, my go-to for expression mm -hmm. is gardening, but that might not be everybody's. That might not be everybody's choice, right? Um, but yeah. that's, that's kind of what I feel this pandemic has, has done positively.